Good afternoon and good morning to everybody today. I hope you're all doing well. Appreciate you guys giving me a little bit of your time today to discuss Scanco procurement and payments automation. Uh, I'm Paul Carrera. I'm a product specialist here at Scanco on the procurement side, and I'm excited to show you guys the latest piece of innovation from Scanco. So just a quick overview of what we're going to be discussing today. We're going to start with a quick introduction about Scanco. Then we'll get into some product discussion, starting with Scanco procurement automation, which I'm going to refer mostly as SPA. And then I'll outline some challenges that SPA solves and move into a demo of that product as well. I'm also going to be showing the integrated payments automation solution within SPA and talk a little bit about why we decided to include this into the SPA product. Lastly, we'll have some parts of SPA that we're excited to be integrating soon, and I'll outline a few of those enhancements that we're working on. And then we'll finish up with a little bit of time for questions at the end, an opportunity for uh, you guys to get those questions to me. So a little bit about Scanco, you may already be familiar with us, but I'd like to provide a little bit of a background about Scanco before we get started. So we've been a leading provider of supply chain automation software for over 30 years. Over this time, our solutions have delivered unequaled efficiency and visibility for manufacturers and distributors worldwide. Our solutions range from simple barcoding to complex distribution and manufacturing operations. And our goal is to lead the industry with our innovation and provide top tier, fully integrated automation specifically for your ERP system. Thousands of companies have trusted us already with their supply chain challenges, and we're happy to provide them with cutting edge solutions. And Scanco Automation, uh, Scanco Procurement Automation, is the latest member of the Scanco Solution family. So a little bit about why procurement automation. So you might be thinking, hey, Scanco does barcoding, automates the warehouse, manufacturing process, why procurement? And as an industry leader, uh, we're always looking for the next way we can help distributors and manufacturers save time and money. And as you know, Scanco has a wide range of solutions from warehouse and manufacturing facilities, uh, from barcode scanning to bin locations, tracking containers on the water. Uh, but what we realized was that there was a step in the very beginning of this process before any goods arrive at the facility uh, that wasn't being automated properly and that was the procurement process. So we went to our customers and our partners and we had discussions with them and we heard a few big challenges on a consistent basis and a dire need for an integrated procurement solution. Some of those challenges were lack of visibility, um, they're carrying too much inventory, sometimes carrying too little inventory and then getting into a tight spot to fulfill um, their sales orders that, that were coming in. Um, and then in general, there was just a lot of manual entry uh, on the purchase order side and uh, inside of their ERP systems. So what we did was, uh, you know, we decided to do something about this. Um, and we took a long look at supply chain challenges in recent years. And we looked at the unpredictability of the supply chain in the last few years that caused chaos for procurement managers. And the downstream effects of that were felt in the warehouse and manufacturing facilities. So we created a solution for that procurement process. And in doing so, we've completed the distribution and manufacturing cycle for our customers by starting at the very beginning before goods even reach their facilities. So what I'd like to do is go into a little bit of a high level demo for the Scanco procurement automation and the payments, the integrated payment solution inside of SPA. So as you'll see here, this is the landing page for our cloud-based procurement automation platform, Scanco procurement automation. And at this landing page, you'll see three main transactions here. So you'll see run new query, find critical inventory and go to saved queries. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a critical inventory search. And what this is going to do is it's going to automatically bring us into a query where we're going to be able to see some different filters 
and uh, look at some some items that we might need to order uh, and items that might be low and, and at a critical level. So you can see we have our health indicators, critical, warning, and healthy. That's going to be based on some different settings inside of SPA, but also some settings inside of your ERP on reorder points and min-max levels that we're going to look at to advise on some of this information. We've obviously got dates for, um, you know, you could set these at, at any type of range. They could be 90 days ahead or 120 days ahead, depending on what your typical lead times are. And we also have um, quite a number of filters here for you to also utilize. One thing you'll also notice is at the bottom of this, we can of course run this query or we can save this query for later. Uh, we've heard from many procurement managers who they might have certain product lines, um, certain item codes uh, that are fast moving items. And in those cases, we want to make sure that they have a shortcut to be able to get to those queries as quickly as possible and see those items regularly so that they can come in each day run that query and see where those items are. As always, when I'm going to run this query, this is you know, real time data. So um, you know, Scanco has always been real time and we're always looking at your Sage or ERP system um, you know, with the most updated data as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this query. And we can save it as whatever we'd like. In this case, we could say this is a webinar. And then I can go and look at my saved ones up here, or I can go into the side and actually see that on the navigation bar. So I can look at my saved queries. I can look at my different ones that I have in here, click on one, and it's going to bring me into those filters immediately. And it's going to save all of my filters for my vendors, purchase orders, product lines, whatever it is that that uh, query has is, is set aside for. And we can go ahead and run this query, and it's going to return some information on some different items that we are obviously in need of. You'll see here that we have these uh, as a make item. So we're looking at making some items. And in order to make those items, we actually have some items that we need to purchase below um, so that we can put these together, obviously, in our own facility. We're going to show you the hierarchies here. And that's just so that you have extra clarity and visibility on the demand multiple levels deep. So right now, this goes 10 subassemblies or 10 layers deep uh, into a parent item. So you can make sure that you're getting the demand for all those necessary items, not just top level items um, for, for your fulfillment needs. We can sort by a variety of different uh, filters here. We can look by vendor. Uh, we can certainly change the method from make to buy. Uh, and then we can, of course, see all of our demand. Um, and then we're going to look at where some of that demand comes from. So if I were to drill into one of these items, then this is going to show me some you know, basic information about that item. But if I go into the orders tab, it is going to show me uh, where this demand comes from. So I can look and see what purchase orders it's on. I can see what sales orders. And in this case, uh, where we have work order integrated with this, uh, we're going to be able to see what types of work orders are also open for that item. We do have some different enhancements coming for this particular view. Um, we are going to be adding some tabs in, and that's one of those uh, things that I want to talk about a little bit later. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and stage a purchase order for us. So in this case, uh, maybe we need um, some panels. So what we can do is we can check that box. And we can always edit this quantity if we feel like we need to order more or less based on the demand that we're seeing. We can also go in and choose a different vendor if we feel like another vendor has better lead time uh, or maybe better pricing. So we do have uh, views in here to uh, be able to see different tiers of pricing as well so that uh, procurement managers can obviously make uh, the wisest choices um, for their purchasing needs for their company. 
in this case, we're happy, I think, with the panel and we're gonna keep that order quantity the way it is. I can go ahead and stage this PO. And this is gonna be another step for me to be able to review this. At this point, I can go in and I can edit this item if I want to. I can say, maybe I just need to order 100. I can obviously see the lead time. I can save that. So we're gonna be updated when this goes inside of Stage or your other ERP system. And then we can go ahead and confirm to buy. Now at this stage, we can also group purchase orders. So if you have multiple purchase orders um, for the same item or the same vendors, then we can group those together and make sure that we're consolidating that as much as possible. So we can move those to open to buy. And if we go into our shopping cart here, we can see a couple different purchase orders that are staged for us to get to. Once again, we have some options for you to see a little bit more visibility. You can still edit this quantity. So if you're a supervisor, um, then you can go in and kind of as a final review before this goes into the ERP system as a purchase order, we can make sure that everything looks good here. If we're happy with these, we can go ahead and check both of these, or we can just select one or select all, and we can go ahead and generate those POs. So when I go and generate those POs, those are going to end up inside of my ERP system, and that's obviously gonna save the rest of my team plenty of time on the manual entry side. And if we do wanna go in and check or edit any of those, then obviously we have the freedom to do that, um, but we're taking you know hours out of people's days uh, trying to ma manually enter those purchase orders, especially if you have many line items uh, or many purchase orders each day and week. So those purchase orders have been successfully generated. And then what we can also do is go into our order history and once again, giving you guys some additional visibility on those orders that have been made up to date. So the other piece of this that you'll have noticed on the left-hand side of the navigation bar was a money sign. And on that money sign, uh, it's gonna bring you on a single sign-on, it's gonna bring you into the Scanco payments automation page. And uh, obviously we wanna make sure that uh, only certain users are able to create these types of payments. Uh, so we can set up different users and roles inside of SPA to make sure that only certain people are able to create payments and also create purchase orders for your company. So if we click that money sign on the left-hand side on the navigation bar, it's gonna bring us into this page. And this is the payments automation um, for Scanco powered by uh, CoreChain Technologies. So once you're logged in, this is kind of what the dashboard is gonna look like. Um, this is gonna show you uh, plenty of details about different AP payments, vendor spend and some different KPIs that you have in your dashboard. To create a payment, um, obviously that's going to start inside of your ERP system, um, but you would go through your typical check preparation process and instead of printing a paper check, uh, then you're going to download a payment instruction file or a PIF file. And what we're gonna do is we just upload that into Scanco Payments Automation. And we see that populate as our latest file. If we drill into this, we can see all of the information that is on that payment. So we can see there's 14 payments here. We can see who these payments were made to, and we can see the amounts. Now, obviously, uh, we want to make sure that you maintain the same relationship uh, with your vendors as you have. And so we don't want to obviously come in between uh, the vendor um, and our customers and, and how these, these folks are being paid. So we wanna make sure that uh, by maintaining that relationship, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna look for their preferred methods of payment. So we're gonna make sure that they get paid on time. Um, we're gonna take this process out of your hands so that you don't have to worry about 
um, you know, obviously getting checks out to people, worrying about the timing of these or the timing of payment. Um, Scanco is going to take care of that piece. Um, we have opportunities for your vendors to utilize virtual card, ACH, um, enhanced ACH, and, and e-checks as well. So what we can also do is we can look at individual payments and we could look at an individual payment and we can check the status of these payments and see the amount and see where that is at currently. So you have full visibility of your payments process. Uh, we're just taking the manual effort out of this. So in addition to security, uh, on-time payments, saving time and effort, uh, we also offer customer rebates uh, for those customers who decide to utilize uh, Scanco Payments Automation. And uh, to talk about that a little bit further, obviously you can reach out to myself or another member of the Scanco team. So why payments automation? Um, you know, this was a similar question to uh, why Scanco procurement automation, right? Uh, Scanco does the barcoding, we automate the warehouse, why would we dabble in the payment side? Well, there was a lot of challenges we were still seeing our customers face. Um, and when we looked at the procurement solution and we wanted to make sure that this was a holistic solution that was gonna address multiple parts of folks' processes, um, we saw these common challenges about managing payables being time consuming. Uh, the time that it takes for people to run through this process, but also to actually issue these payments and then pay attention and monitor those payments. Um, paper checks obviously are messy and um, kind of to that last point, they are risky uh, to some extent. Um, you know, obviously I'm sure everybody on this call has heard horror stories of what fraud, uh, check fraud or wire fraud can do to a business. Um, and if we can save our companies or any of our customers from that happening to them, then obviously we wanna make sure that we're doing our due diligence there. Um, the other thing is access to working capital. So by making this process more efficient and ensuring that your payments are gonna be made on time with the vendor preferred method, then we are giving the customers and businesses more access to working capital in the meantime. So I touched on this a little bit earlier when we were going through the SPA demo, some different enhancements and integrations that are upcoming. So some three big ones that we've been focusing on is an integration with production management. So uh, currently SPA is integrated with bill of materials and the work order modules, but we wanna make sure that anyone who is moving from production management to work order, that we're offering the same functionality of SPA to pull demand from sales orders, and work tickets and provide that multi-layer visibility into sub-assembly demand and automate the generation of work tickets inside of Sage to save the same time and effort that we're looking to save by creating these purchase orders inside of Sage as well. Projected demand was the other, um, the other big enhancement that we felt like uh, people really needed. And um, you know we heard plenty of this from our customers about the need for projected demand and we're close to having this built inside of SPA. And we're gonna be able to give users the ability to see demand many months out and to plan purchasing decisions more effectively. And this is gonna be in um, you know, where we saw the tabs for where uh, when you drill into a specific item and you see where the demand comes from, there's also gonna be an area there, another tab for you to see some of the projected demand um, and then even uh, work with some of that data as well. Also in that same window is gonna be historical trends. So as much as purchasers need to look forward, sometimes looking back at historical trends can be just import, as important in making uh, strategic procurement decisions. So this is also being built as we speak uh, so that your procurement team can see previous trends in easy to read visuals and keep folks from pouring over hundreds of pages of reports to determine you know, what needs to be bought at a certain time of the year. Best part of SPA is that it is cloud-based and as these enhancements are completed, current customers are going to have access to these enhancements immediately. So no need to reinstall, no costly upgrades, 
uh, to move to new versions. So they'll have these um, you know, on demand. So I will now open it up to some questions. If you guys have any questions, um, you know, feel free to enter those. So if you have a question, you can type that. Did have one question come through um, and just a question about um, controlling who can generate different purchase orders and, and kind of the roles and responsibilities inside of, of SPA. And, and obviously, you know, some procurement teams are going to have multiple members uh, working in SPA and they can work in SPA at the same time. And that data is going to be updated for them. Um, so it's not going to be stagnant information. Um, and we did want to make sure that those different teams have, uh, you know, there's control over who can do what. So there is different roles um, and permissions associated with the different users and roles inside of SPA that allow uh, you to control who can do what and who can actually, you know, create those purchase orders inside of Sage. Um, and also, uh, you know, go into Scanco payments. So for projected demand in upcoming releases, would this be coming from IRP or from entry inside of SPA? So we would have the ability to do both. Um, we're going to be able to pull from IRP if needed, if that's already present, or we're going to have an option inside of the item drill down to also um, for folks who don't have IRP to be able to create their own demand um, or project demand inside of uh, SPA as well. So there's going to be both solutions there, um, and we're going to be looking at, at, at some different places. Looks like that's all we've got. So um, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to give me a call or send me an email. And thank you again for your time.